Where do I go when I wanna be changed? Where do I turn to when I don't know the way? I will left when I should have been Lord, I need you to shine my light. You've been going through long enough, but you are here in Jesus' name. Oh, come down to the new direction. You won't feel the same. Where do I go when I wanna be changed? Where do I turn to when I don't know the way? I will left when I should have right. Lord, I need you to shine my light. You've been going through long enough, but you are here in Jesus' name. Oh, come down to the new direction. Share the word of God with your people, O God. In the name of Jesus, we pray now, Father, O God, as we speak, O God, from our heart and from the word of God, let us speak, O God, in clarity, yes, wisdom, and understanding. Yes, in the Lord. name of Jesus, we in pray now, Father, Jesus. let us hear, O God, yes, what the Spirit Lord, is Jesus. wanting to say to the body. Yes, in the Lord, name Jesus. of Jesus, we tell in you, thank you, God. Just touch these lips thank of clay, O God, that we may speak a word, O God. In the name of Jesus, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in our sight, O Lord, our God, our strength. And I redeem and all God people will say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. We do thank God tonight uh, for our being here uh, once again. Um, we're here to share the word of God with you through our virtual uh, Bible study. And we uh, have been doing this now uh, for a few weeks, maybe a month or two now. Um, and we thank God for the opportunity that we're able to come to your homes and share the word of God with you. Uh, tonight, uh, we're going to uh, go back into our Bible study, uh, teaching on self-control uh, tonight for uh, the last question that was asked of us and uh, sharing the, the platform with us tonight. Again, we have our very own evangelist, Frida Gore, to my left. And Where do I go? We'll share our uh, broadcast uh, so that we may be able to reach some souls uh, that is looking for a way back home. But we do thank God tonight. Uh, and if you have any questions, we're going to have our Facebook up uh, so that we can see the questions. And we want to try to answer uh, to our best ability uh, what the Word of God has given us to give to you all tonight. Uh, but we've been dealing with for the last few weeks on... Uh, self-control that was our theme of the, the lesson but it was uh, the theme of it was the inner uh, internal conflict or the internal fight uh, that we all fight on a daily basis and what we want to do is encourage you that you can do this through by Christ and we do thank God tonight uh, last week we brought with you um, why why is it so hard for people to practice uh, self-control and we talked about that last week and we we spent all day and all night just on that and it was very uh good and tonight we the last question that was uh, brought to our attention that we wanted to uh hit last week we briefly hit it but uh we wanted to uh bring a little bit more light into it um 
the question that was asked, uh, that was given unto us, why people don't realize they have a problem. And we know that we're living in a generation now that uh, sometimes as the people, uh, we, we can't see our own faults. We, we can see everybody else, but we can't see what we are doing or what is taking place in our life that's causing people to feel uncomfortable. But we do thank God tonight uh, that we want to deal with that question. And uh, we're going to talk with uh, Minister Mike Jenner first. We're going to have him to bring it out to us, uh, dealing with us tonight. Uh, why is it, uh, the question was, why uh, people don't realize they have a problem? God bless everyone. I'm glad to be back here tonight. And um, I hope that everyone got something from what we shared last week. And we are looking forward to expounding more tonight. And to the question that you are asked, Pastor, uh, like I said last week, I believe that we all know when we have a problem. Um, it's not that we don't know that we don't have a problem. The fact of the matter is that we want to be who we are. We say, that's the way I've always been, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to change. You know, but when we come to Christ, Christ requires us to change. And if we don't change, we cannot be used by him. Right. So what happens is we get in the flesh, and we let the flesh overrule oh, yeah. what the Spirit is saying to us. Right. Right. And we step out on the flesh and... When somebody tries to correct us, we're in the flesh. Right, right. When somebody tries to say something to us, we're in the flesh. So it, nobody can tell you anything. And it seems like you don't want to hear what people are saying because we allow the flesh to take over. Right. And the, as the scripture says, we don't walk in the spirit. Uh, uh, the spirit, don't scribe, the spirit don't scribe with man always. So we have to be careful when we're in a situation that we don't allow the flesh to take over and that we hear that humble spirit that is talking to us and giving us a, 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 a answer because the Bible said that we're supposed to have an answer for all men. But if I step out in the flesh, of course it's, it's going to seem like I don't have a, uh, I don't realize that I got a problem. But like I said last week, when I lay in bed and them cookies are calling me, I know that that's not good. And so when you lash out the people or as they would say, I'm just being myself, then you know you got a problem, but you just choose to ignore that problem. Hmm. So, 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 what, what I like what you just said, and 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 it's not to challenge you by any means, um, where you say that some people uh, know, and, and one thing that I like what you said, and we all are accustomed to this. Uh, the scripture says in Genesis six and three that uh, the spirit don't strive with man always, mm -hmm. and 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 I have a, a, a somewhat a different twist concerning that uh, because when you think about the Old Testament uh -huh. how the Spirit of God uh, it will uh, roam over them over them right and yes. it roamed over them mm -hmm. and so when they get from under that cloud yes that they, they was separated from the Spirit, Spirit of, God. of God so he didn't strive upon man always but now we that are born again we that have supposed to be the gift mm -hmm. of the Holy Ghost right. now wherever we go, Right. We should be carrying it. Right. We should have the Holy Ghost. He said, I'm going to send back. We know we just got our Pentecost. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm going to send back the Comforter. The Comforter. Which shall lead us. Now, if if the Comforter will leave us, he said he'll never leave us, nor will he what? Forsake us. So so when I hear that, uh, it brings to my remembrance that, that the Scripture said that he's sending back his Comforter, that we that have the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, everywhere we go, we shall have it. Now, it's up to us. To, uh, to follow through 
what, what the Spirit of God is saying. And that comes with self-control. Bishop, uh, our bishop, he, he was on our live last week, and he said uh, something very funny to me. He said, now, some of y'all was trying to act like the Holy Ghost ain't got no power. And I was like, no, no, that's not what we were saying. Because the Holy Ghost, it has power. It gives you power. But at the same token, you got to let it operate fully. And if you don't let this spirit operate fully, you're going to always go contrary. And that's why you can be up today, down tomorrow, uh, in the world today. Yeah, just wish-washy. So, so uh, you, you dealt with... Uh, Mike, you dealt with that some people know. And and, and, and truth be told, I can agree and disagree. Amen. You know, Amen. and, and what, what I'm going to do, I'm going to disagree to agree with you on that because the, what what point you're making make a whole lot of sense. Right. That some people, uh, I'm, I'm just me. Mm-hmm. I ain't changing for nobody. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, but, but, but listen, in this way, you got to change. That's right. you, can't, you can't be your own trying to serve God. Right? That's right? He said, choose whom this day, whom you're going to serve. So at the end of the day, we have to change up the way we even think. Right? He said, in all our ways, what? Get an understanding. So even, even our own way of thinking, we got to change it, right? Amen. So so what we have to do as the people of God, when we see that we have a problem, right. don't be so in a defense mode that when somebody bring you out, you know, Probably now, whenever you do it, do it in love. Don't do it in a, 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 a arrogant attitude. Don't do it in a a belittle uh, 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 attitude, trying to bring them down. You know, uh, it's a difference in me talking to you, correcting you with me and you, than you trying to correct me out in open. Now, the Bible do say sometimes you have to rebuke people openly, say the other was fear. Now, I understand that, but when people are dealing with something they may not even know, that's when I got to go to you privately. To right, right, is that? Oh, a leader. All right, so so you can't do that. No, 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 no. You know, the preacher just because they got that title, they think they can. You know, not to not rebuke someone in the open. Only a leader. Right. Because right. the leader, he uh, he's he cares for your soul. Right. Right. So it is his responsibility mm-hmm. to lead you in the right direction. Right. Right. But if I'm not the, if I'm not your leader, then it's not it's not my responsibility to correct you out in the open. I can go to you privately right. and talk with you right. and say, "Hey brother or hey right. sister, right. you know, I think this is what we should do different, you know, what you was a little you was a little out of order." Right. But Never should I should I try to correct you in the open in, in the open. But but, but it, before it, that, hold on, hold on I, I hear you, Benjamin. But before you go that, I think you need to have somewhat a relationship. You got to have a relationship because if you if you already don't like me mm-hmm. and you coming to correct me or to straighten me out, the first thing I'm gonna go in defense mode. Say who who are you who who are you talking to? You know. Then we steps all out of self control. You're right. Right. Mm-hmm. And and we find so many. Church folks are so dysfunctional in the body of Christ. Nobody wants to be corrected. Nobody want to be told truth. They have their favorites. Yeah, and and and, and 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 as a pastor, sometimes a pastor don't even have a voice in his own church, and and that's a sad situation when a leader don't have a voice. Right. Amen. Right. So. Uh, Even in the midst of that, Bishop, you still have to be very careful when you go to someone in private because there are some levels that a minister or you just can't touch. That's just for the leader to deal with. Right, right. You, you, you just you have to be very careful because why you can inflict more pain and cause the situation to get worse. Why? Because now the person that you went to, they're feeling like they're being attacked. Yeah. Can't nobody say nothing to me but my leader. Sad to say, but most people have that mentality nowadays. Yeah. If it's not the leader, you're not on that level to correct them anyway. So there comes a, a level of correction in the church. All right. So so uh, question that I want to ask you, and I, and, I, and I appreciate what you just said. Um, uh, the question that we want to make sure that we tackle, uh, mm-hmm. why do people don't see that they're wrong or why people don't realize that they have a problem. I believe that people realize that they don't have a problem because one, you're in denial. Mm -hmm. 
Good you're one. in denial. And when you in denial, I don't care who tell you what or when they tell you, you're not going to see it the way they see it. Right. And not only that is, you know, some people just don't care that they have a problem. You're right. Because they have developed that mentality that wow. they don't care. Wow. When they when they have that mentality that they don't care, you can't get in no edgewise, as the older folks can say. They're like a hard rock. You can't crack it. Wow. That, that's good. They're in denial that they have a problem. And, and what I have noticed that how can you sit Unbelief. under teaching mm -hmm. and never feel convicted through by the word? Uh, the Bible tells us, I believe in, uh, let, let, me, let me make sure that we, 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 we quoting it right. Uh, let's go to John 15 and 3. I want to make sure that we're quoting it right. Praise the Lord. Because when you are dealing uh, in the body of Christ, uh, we must understand that the word of God uh, comes to find us out. Amen. He says in John 15 and 3, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. So, in other words, every time the word of God comes, I should find myself in the word. Should, should we not? Amen. Yes. We should get to the point and say, you know what? The preacher didn't talk to nobody. The preacher didn't know what was going on. But I feel as though that the word of God is talking to me. But, Do you ever feel like that some Sunday? Yes. But, you, but, same, but a lot of folks are always looking at somebody else. Right. They feel like, oh, the preacher, oh, he, he, talking, he, boy, he talking to them over there. Right. He ain't talking right. to me. Right. They're too busy worrying about somebody else's problem and not worrying about their own problem. Right. And the reason I say, when we come to Christ, uh -huh. when we get on this altar and we pray, we have to give up everything. Right. Everything to be a part of him. So for us to come back and have this problem, that means that somewhere along the way, we picked that back up right. because we had to let it go. Because, right. you know, the Bible says that where there is sin, he ain't coming in. Right. right. So if he ain't coming in and sin, when I get down here and purge and get cleaned up by the spirit of the Holy Ghost, then I gave up all of that. Right. So by me giving it all up, that means that I changed. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And, and so, 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 so when we are looking in this generation, people sometimes don't realize they have a problem. Do we ever take in consideration that people can have a mental problem? Ah. Oh, my God. That they can have a mental problem and may not be able to recognize that they got an issue. That, it, and, and sometimes, and the reason why I'm saying this, uh, we could be in a, in, a, in a time that we always uh, cast in judgment, but you don't know what's going on mentally mm -hmm. in, in their mind causing them to act out in a certain way. Mm -hmm. and, and, and really, truthfully, people like that need God and they need somewhat some extra help too sometimes. Amen. You know, ain't nothing wrong with going to a psychiatrist and, and you need God too. <laughs> because some people... Have to. Have to they have. need to because they're not seeing what is taking place. Mm -hmm. and, and they're not hearing. And, 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 and what I like, what both of y'all said, that people know that they got a problem. But it's, there are some people don't even realize. Don't realize. Like sometimes you could tell them and say, listen, you, you're doing this wrong. And, and I had an individual to, to tell me the other day. They said, you always said this and you always said that. Until I saw it on video mm -hmm. and I was able to see. What, what y'all was saying because I couldn't see it because it was me. Amen. Leandro, jo Leandro Johnson said, Lord, deliver, deliver me, me. That's right. Because all I seem to do is what? Hurt, Hurt me. me. Hurt me. Do, do you ever sometimes beat yourself up because you say, why did I do that? Why did I say that? Why did I, I act that way? Done. Why did I move that way? Why did I react in that way? That's where self-control comes in. Amen. Right? Yes. And you got to take on full responsibility as we say the Holy Ghost will only lead you, guide you, and bring all things to your remembrance. Amen. Right? Amen. Now, let, let's go to today's time. Today. Now, they, they got rioting. They got uh, protesting that's going on. Now, when we go out there, mm -hmm. you got to be peace, peaceful. That's right. They, they say as long as you're doing it peaceful, that they, they, they won't have a problem with it. But when we start looting, when we start uh, 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 start violence, 
And when we start losing our self-control, then that's when the, 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 the police force and all that thing, and then they tell us to go home at a certain time. Amen. That's when we need to leave, right? <laughs> right? Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm scared of the police. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared of them. Hey, man. You know when they when they when they put on them blue sirens and I'm driving, I don't know what's gonna take place. Hey, Amen. But but I was taught to do what my grandparents taught me to do. They say, son, whenever you get stopped by the police, put your, put your hand on the steering wheel and you ask questions whether can I go to my glove department or not. Let your window down first. Yeah, yeah, let your window down. <laughs> put your hands on the steering wheel. Mm-hmm. Oh, he ain't gonna tell me what to do. I ain't did nothing wrong. They try to find a way to shoot you anyway. Yeah, man. <laughs> but just be be truthful. They, 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 when, when people are gun happy or or have the authority and they just happy with and, and try to abuse what they they have, they they looking for any mistake. So what we have to do as the people of God are uh, acknowledge that when I when I get loud, I know I need to come down. Mm-hmm. And minister minister Mike. <laughs> One thing I drilled on you for years. For years. For he years. is a drill sergeant major. <laughs> and he talks to people hard. And, and loud and back in his face, back in his eye. Now you say, Mike. I gave him the uh, Sunday school superintendent and I, I brought him in the back. I said, let me tell you something. Lower your voice. Have some self-control. I know you know you get excited, but kind of tune it down because... Sometimes people can take what we do wrong, mm-hmm. right? Our mannerisms, right? And so, so have you learned anything from that? Hey Amen. I learned you, a lot you, from you, it. You didn't know. You didn't know uh, that that offends people, did you? You you what what what, what did you? I. It wasn't the fact that I didn't know that it offends people, uh, Bishop. It was the fact that that was what was in me. Right. And uh, uh, uh. uh what you, what's that message you preach? What I like is killing me. Right. What was in me was killing me. Because if, if people can't hear you right. for seeing you, yeah, the things he, that you're doing. He's he shot, y'all, so he got to speak loud. <laughs> <laughs> the things that you're doing can have an adverse effect, right. even if you're trying to be positive in a situation. Right. So, is it? Like I said, when the Holy Ghost come in, it's supposed to make a change. It's supposed to. It's supposed to make a change. Right. And if the Holy Ghost makes a change, then the person that I am, if someone comes to me and humbly and in peace, then I should be able to hear what they're saying. Right. And as Elder Kaji would say, take and let it resonate in there. Right. It may not seem like I'm listening. Right. But when it resonates, then... I can reflect on myself. But you said a key word. You say humbly come to you. Humbly. A lot of a lot of times people will come in a rage. They come talking loud. And you know, other people on the other end already feel disrespected because now you in my space. You hollering at me. You talking loud. I don't know what you're talking about. But still and yet, when you're in that type of situation, somebody about got to be the better man. Somebody got to be Amen. humble and somebody got to be quiet. That's right. Right. So, uh, that, that's the thing. Uh, somebody got to be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> because grandma always told me Can't it takes two. It takes two to me. <laughs> right? So I ain't no need of me sitting up here fussing with you and then you fussing back. But if one shut up, grandma said they ain't gonna argue about it. Mm-hmm. That's right. Right? So so dealing with why people don't realize they have a problem, y'all said that uh some people are in denial. I think I heard you say that. Mm-hmm. And you say that some people know they got a problem. They just ain't going to change because it's them. And I said that sometimes mental uh, issues can be a part. And, and, and one thing that I have noticed in the body of Christ, that when we deal with self-control, we only think that we use self-control when we outside mm-hmm. and to our world no. system. But self-control ought to be more um, exemplified in the house of God that that someone would learn from brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so how we should carry ourselves. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we as the people of God, uh, some of us are visual learners. Yes. Amen. 
And what I mean by visual learners, that we see how you do, and that's how we act, right? God can come and, and transform us into the things of God, but some things come through a learnability. That's right. Amen. Right? And sometimes we have to have somewhat a, a role model. That's why in the, in the new church, we need to go back to having role models in the house of God that somebody will look up to that they say, I want to patternize myself after after that mother, after that father, after that deacon, after that sister or that brother. Praise the Lord. Because you never know who you got uh, influence over. Amen. That's why we have to be so very careful that we practice self-control. Even when you know you got a problem. All right. Let, let's look at um, uh, Matthew 7. Matthew 7 and... Uh, let me see and make sure that we're getting the scriptures right. Matthew 7 and 7. Uh -huh. uh, the scripture says on uh, the King James Version, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek. And you shall find. Seek. When you don't realize that you have a problem and somebody keep informing you of the problem, first of all, you need to ask God. Amen. Say, Lord, I'm hearing it from multiple resources that they see this problem. But Lord, the enemy got me so blinded that I can't see. So now what I'm going to do, ask mm -hmm. God. The Bible says that he'll give you, in Jeremiah, he'll give you pastors after his own heart, which shall what? Feed you with knowledge and what? Truth. Understanding. And so what we notice here, he said, ask, and it shall be what? Giving Given. you. He says, see, sometimes you got to go through your, 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 your hidden parts in your, your mind. You got to go and try to find out what's causing you to act in a certain way. Do you not know that before you step out of self-control, it's something that triggers it? Amen. Amen. Right? You need to find out what triggers you to stepping out. If, it's, if I don't like nobody talking to me. You need to ask God and say, Lord, I need help that when someone come to me wrong, that I hold my composure, I, I stand firm, and, 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 I, and I just swallow it, I digest it, and not blow off. Because some of us will blow off like a blowfish. Amen. But the scriptures say he, he will give us a way out. Yeah, he'll give you a way out. But, but if God don't give don't you give a way you out. A way, you still got the main Now, now what control. God does, I like that. What God does, he try you in that matter because if he release you everything that bothers you, mm -hmm. you will never overcome that. That's Amen. right. Amen. And while you're there, Bishop, I'm going to be a little transparent because I can relate to what you're saying because many a times, you know, being in the church and certain things would happen and I'll be like, well, you know, Lord, why, why is this and why is that? You know, and, it, and I was always felt like you know being attacked or whatever but then hey i had to look at the fact when i had different people come to me and, and telling me that oh you know this this right here i see this that that and third i had to get on my knees and i had to go to god and i asked god i said lord show me what they're seeing and then work on it a lot of times we don't want to profess we don't that see. we have a problem we don't right. want to accept right. it but what i may be doing may be hindering in you right and we amen and the bible say he don't want us to be Some standing lemon. Standing in the way of sinner and sit and see the scoff. He don't want us to be doing things, especially out of where mm -hmm. that caused your brother or sister to fall. So so block. that's a good thing. You said you had to ask God to show you you mm -hmm. what people are seeing in you. Amen. Right? So what I do when when people say, uh, oh, you know, and this is one of the things that I done heard. He's arrogant. Oh, he think you know it all. No. I'm just what I know, I know. And you can't knock me off my rocker. Right. You can't. Confident. I'm very confident in what, what I, I know. know. Yes. Right? Yes. Especially when I open the word of God. That's right. I know it for myself. That's right. Now, now you can call me arrogant or whatever you want to call me. But when I know what I know, I had some people tell me, oh, he just, oh, uh, uh, he's too arrogant. Arrogant? It's, no. it's not about being arrogant, Bishop. You got to understand that some people are intimidated by what you know. That right. they feel like right. they don't know and they right. feel like they're not on that level. So that's why they they attack you in that manner because why? they intimidate. Right. And not only that, Bishop, you know, the, the verses that you're talking about, it requires us to have an authentic relationship right. with God. Right. Mm -hmm. That's the only way that these, that these three commandments work. 
right. is that you have an authentic relationship with God. Yes. And if you have an authentic relationship with God, you can go to the word and right. get an understanding. Right. Right. And see, the people that's looking at you and saying you arrogant, they don't have an authentic relationship with God. Right. So they can't go to the word and get an understanding. Because even if you have a master's degree, a doctorate degree, if you don't have the spirit of the Holy Ghost, you are not going to understand this word. Right. Mm -hmm. So people want to knock what they can't figure out. Or what right. they don't understand. Right, right. So uh, dealing with uh, what I've dealt with, uh, Acts, and it shall be given you a seat. Now you got to be in uh, a, a journey, journey trying, to, trying to find out, Lord, I want you to help me right. uh, figure out this. Now, when God show you, you got to work on you. How do you respond when God show you what you're dealing with? How do you respond? Well, Bishop, I, like I said, transparent moment. When he showed me me, I'm going to be honest to you. I broke down and cried because I was like, Lord, you know, here it is all this long time. I'm thinking that, you know, I'm doing right. I'm acting right. I'm saying the right things, you know, but here it is. Now you showing me me. Now I got to do something about it. Mm -hmm. I asked for forgiveness first from right. God. And then from that day forward, when I got up off my knees, I said to myself that I'm going to walk in the straight and narrow path. All right. Can I stop you, sister? Uh, she said that once the Lord done showed her what she dealt, was dealing with and what she's fighting with, she said she went to God and asked God for forgiveness. But who <laughs> you hurt? Not knowing you. Do you My go back and apologize? Yes, you do. Right. If you know so, it. Because what, what people do now, yeah. uh, Vanja is going, I'm going to go to God. I, 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 I'm, not, uh, I'm not dealing with that. I, I'm not dealing with No. Before God be able to forgive you, you got to, you, you got to, you got to go and be forgiven. Mm -hmm. now, now, we shouldn't get to the point and, and get to the point of life, oh, they didn't mean it. That is a bad way to be, trying to tell people, that they didn't mean what they said. If they apologized to me and said they were sorry, whether they meant it or not, I'm going to take it and I'm going to forgive them. Amen. Right? Amen. Oh, they didn't mean what they said. It don't even matter. They open up their mouth and ask for forgiveness. You ought to grant them their party and say, I received that. Mm -hmm. Not, they ain't mean it. The fact is, Bishop, that you don't want to accept the apology. So you're looking for a way to say they didn't. They were just saying something. Yeah. All right. So, uh, are you finished, Avengers? Yes. Yes. Sir. Okay. Uh, said, uh, action it shall be given you. Seek, ye shall find. Now the Lord will show you you, and it shall be open unto you. So now, what? What I, I, I come to the realization now. Once you are able to name what drives your emotions, mm -hmm. <laughs> now you can tame it. Now you done found the root of the problem. Mm -hmm. Now you done named it. You done, you done got your hands on it. Now you can tame what's really bothering you. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, can't, you can't defeat something that you don't know. That's right. But when God show you mm -hmm. what it is. And, and what I like about uh, the same chapter, uh, ju uh, Matthew chapter 7, it says, Judge not that ye be not judged. For with the judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged, and with what measure you meet. Meet. And so, what we understand that uh, in the body of Christ, we have to be so careful mm -hmm. that we don't be judging by what we see, because what happens is people say, "Ah, you, 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 you." When, when you judge, you, you, you judging me. That, that that's the key word that they want to use. Uh, you judging me, judging me. But I'm not judging you when I really see mm -hmm. what's taking place, right? Amen. Judging is something you don't see, right? Mm -hmm. So Amen. when you're judging, the Bible speaks of us not judging, right? So that's one of the things as uh, bringing in the people of God, we have to make sure that we're not uh, judgmental. judgmental. So when, we, when new souls come in, they may come in here smell like a liquor bottle, right? That's not our key to say, oh, they ain't right. They ain't. You know what? I remember on some few months ago, um, and it was so funny, and, 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 and I'm not going to bring mention, but it, it was a young individual come in here, and they found them a, found them a lady in here. And, 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 and you know, 
they're doing good, what have we. So I, I, I'm assuming, you know, I'm judging now. I, I say when he brought, brought his buddy in here, and, and, and uh, when he brought his buddy in here, mm-hmm. he must say, hey, man, you need to go. There's some ladies there. You might might pick you up one. That, 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 that's me that's, assuming. That's assuming. You, you know, that, I, I was judging. And, and, and the Spirit of God was so high that Sunday. I think we opened up with prayer. And the Spirit got hold of that young man from cried. the beginning. And he cried. I said, Lord, have mercy. See, our intentions, God can shift that's right. our intentions. You never know. What's going to take place when you walk in the house of God, right? Mm-hmm. But we have to get out of self and let God be in full operation, mm-hmm. right? And so I, I would just, I was tickled on the inside because my mind, how, how corner I was, I said, well, he coming here trying to find him somebody. Mm-hmm. And the spirit of God came in and touched him, right? Mm-hmm. So now we see that God uh, told us to ask and it shall be what? Given, mm-hmm. seek. And you shall find. Um, now, we that are the body of Christ, sometimes when we're so disobedient or we're so uh, cocky, we're so arrogant, God sometimes has to send someone, someone to help you out. Right? Mm-hmm. David. David was a repentant man. Mm-hmm. David done all he knew, you know, he, he you know, he repented to God and all those good things. But still yet, David got stubborn. Yes, he did. Didn't he? Yes, mm-hmm. he did. Now, now, he knew what he done was wrong, right? Yes, he did. Yes. Did he not? Mm-hmm. What, what? Talk, talk a little bit about that. What, what, uh, who had to come to David? Who? Nathan, Nathan had to come to David. Why, 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 why couldn't David go by himself and say, Lord, you know, he went by himself, but why couldn't he go without someone encouraging him? Because David David felt that he could get away with what he done. And yeah. that's how we as a people feel like if we done something and we know we done something wrong, if nobody don't come to me, then I think nobody saw what I did. Nobody heard what I said. So until someone come and reveal to you that, hey, you done this, thou art the man. All, all right, all right. So if we stop the mouth of these false prophets that's roaming around uh-huh. speaking blessings on people's lives mm-hmm. right and start encouraging people how we need to line up mm-hmm. I think we'll have better better movement in the house of God mm-hmm. but all the prophets now all they want to do you getting ready to get your next home your next car but they don't talk about that inner man that need to be attacked that's right and then the thing about Nathan, too, that I like when he went to David, he didn't start off telling Nathan that he was the man. He David. used a David. He used a parable. A parable. And he let David profess or confess that he was the man. Right. Amen? Right, right. right. Sometimes we, we have to go to people. We have to use strategic ways in how to deal with people and allow God to download in our spirit how we need to deal with a certain issue before we just take upon ourselves and go to someone and try to handle the situation. First of all, you need to be led by God. Right. And you know, and you also need to pray. Right. Right. So, go go ahead. Hey, man, and and even being led by God, and even when you pray, you need to ask God to give you a way Mm -hmm. that they can accept Mm-hmm. What it is that you were saying. Because when uh, Nathan went to David, he put the, he, he put the uh, parable out there mm-hmm. so that it, David wouldn't think that he was talking about him. Mm-hmm. That's but, strategic. but he will be able to see the fault in what he was doing. Himself. And so when Nathan said it and David listened and he came to the conclusion that he came to, Nathan was able to tell him, well, uh, sir, that is you. Now, David, see his wrongdoing. Right. right. And then he goes to Psalm 51, have, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according uh, unto the multitude of thy tender mercy, blot out my transgression, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge. He acknowledged that part. My transgression. Mm-hmm. So now you done ask. God then gave it to you. Now you must acknowledge mm-hmm. where I'm wrong at. That's right. You know, I'm a type of I'm a type of preacher. If, if if I say something wrong, 
and, and I find out different, I'm going to come back and straighten it out. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to sit there and keep going on for years and years and then like push over because I could have messed somebody up. Mm-hmm. Right? But what I like to do is if you ask me a question and I don't know it, I'm not going to give you a quick answer. That's right. I want to make sure it line. Now, I can give you. Now, if you're asking me the from the top, top of my head, head yeah. I can tell you what I think. What you think. But, but what I like to do, I like to make sure it lines up with the word. Yeah, man. And so when it lines up with the word, I got the word to back me up. And I'm not going to use one scripture to back me up. Okay. You got to have uh, scriptures on top of scriptures. And one thing about the word of God, his, his word is talking from uh, uh, the Old Testament, New Testament. They're all intertwined with one another. That's right. They, they don't contradict each other. And that's the problem that they we have. They back each other up. Right. So, so uh, he said, I knowledge. But what I like about uh, the sixth verse, he said, behold, David said, thou desires truth in the inward. He, he desired truth in the inward part. So when Nathan came to him, because he desired to know when he was when he was doing wrong, when Nathan came to him and told him what it was that he was doing, he was able to accept it. Right. We have to desire right. to be right in this way. Right, right. We can't just say it. We can't just have lip service saying that we want to be right. But we have to truly desire. Right, right. And and when you truly desire. Uh, for God to to um, clean you up when you truly desire you're going to make yourself available mm-hmm. that's right you're going to make every opportunity like God I need your help and and one thing about it once you acknowledge that you have a problem and why we ask the question why people don't realize they have a problem once they come around teaching once they come around uh, the word of God being spread it uh, the word of God will find a way to get to their heart Mm-hmm. Because one thing about it, we, we, we don't want to be so caught up in uh, running off of our emotions. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and one thing about it, when you run off your emotions, sometimes you'll only be what they want you to be temporarily. temporarily. But, but when you go out from the depth of your heart that this is something I want to do. And, and this is what happened some years ago. I, I believe it was my first funeral that I had to preach. Mm-hmm. And I funeralized this young lady in Miami, Florida. She was 32 years old. And I think at that time I had to be 20, 22, 23, somewhere up in there. And our church in Florida, and my grandfather, um, they, the, the, the lady that was there at the church at that time, she said, I want a younger preacher to preach. So they flew me all the way from Murder Beach to Florida. My, Miami, Florida. And so when I got there, <clears throat> I, was, I was nervous. Because my grandfather took me through all what the steps of how to do things, but still, and yet, I didn't have my mentor with right you. there with me. It kind of had me kind of shaking, and I had to go to the, I had to go to the house, right? And when I went to the house, and you know how the preacher, we we come and we pray for the family. That's right. Everybody was just looking, you know, looking thugged out, mm-hmm. and I was scared because <laughs> I, I didn't know, you know, it, it it was a scary moment, and 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 when I prayed, then I got a release. But well, let me tell you about this. When I preached that sermon, uh, that Sunday morning, uh, to my knowledge, they said that a lot of the young, young people mm-hmm. uh, left the funeral and went to the church that Sunday morning. After after the word of God pricked their heart and they was, you know, want. But but I found out that they was only emotional driven. That's right. And, and, yeah. and what happens is they call back they call back to Murder Beach. They say, Bishop, the young people came, dotted dotted, and and, and 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 they, they was looking, thought you was the pastor of this church. He said, what I'm going to do, he said, well, I, I'm a, we're going to send uh, Michael back down there for a revival, for a three-night revival. They paid for my flight. They paid for everything, hotel, food, blase, blase. And they sent me back, and only a few that was there because those are the ones that was really wanting something from God. That's right. But we had more to, to come there, but they was only emotional driven. But so that's why when they are emotional driven and they finding themselves uh, and they, they seeing where they're wrong and they seeing where they falling short, that's when 
someone got to go around them and embrace them. That's why you have to get their numbers, not to gossip mm -hmm. with them, that's but right. to encourage, encourage them, them. Right? And so that's where uh, self-control come in at as being a leader. We have to be so very careful that we don't do more pushing out than we do in drawing in. Amen. Now, we, we as a leader cannot go along with sin. No. You know, we can't do that. We no. cannot go along with sin and make people feel comfortable in their sin because what happens is once they feel comfortable in their sin, God is going to hold that uh, uh, charge to you because now you done made it so easy for people to do what they want to do. That's right. And, and that's not what God is calling us to do. Uh, so we're dealing with um, uh, why people don't realize they have a problem. And we, we found out that they do realize they have a problem. But when I say when they got mental issues. Uh, different things, you know, um, that can be another thing. But our sinful nature manifests itself in three ways, and we're getting ready to go. Self-reliance, mm -hmm. self-centeredness, -center, and self-condemnation. We self deal with all all of those. Self-condemnation? Condemnation. Okay. We, we, we beat we ourselves. Myself. We beat yeah. ourselves. You know, yeah. and, and, and my grandfather, he gets upset with me all the time because I'm always putting yeah. myself down. I'd be like, Pop, no, I'm not this. You know, I don't never want to put myself so high because you got some people that know they got it mm -hmm. and they'll brag, yeah, I know I got it. When I go there, I change the whole atmosphere. You know, mm -hmm. no, I stay as low because yourself. I never know how God is going to use me in that season. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I condemn myself a lot and, and, I, and, and, and I'm working on that. Because that's not of God. Mm -mm. You know, you ought to be able to encourage yourself, as David said. David said mm -hmm. You know, yourself. see, sometimes we, we'll put ourselves down. What you want to say, Brother Mike? Uh, the scripture, Proverbs 25 and 26. A righteous man falleth down before the wicked. Is It is, I mean, it's as a troubled fountain and a corrupting spring, which is saying that, um, when you go out trying to put yourself up, then you are not uh, any good. Right. Mm -hmm. We have to be humble. Right. If we're not humble, then God can't get the glory out of what we're doing. Right, right. And in order for us to be elevated, he has to elevate us. Right. That's right. We can't elevate ourselves, no. which is what a lot of preachers do. They, like you said, when they step on the scene, they feel like they, I've changed the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. But it ain't you that's changing the atmosphere. Right. It's the God that's in you that's making a change. And we can't take no credit for ourselves. It all right. goes to God. It all goes back to God. All right, we're we going to have to move on, hey, shout the way. Uh, but, but let's remember, as becoming a child of God, let us not be so arrogant. Let us not be so boastful. Uh, we live in a generation now that people want other folks to realize that they're preaching. Amen. I don't think you're much of a preacher when you got to make you got to make stuff to make people notice that you're preaching. And, back, like, and you know, the older people will say, you know, it's better to be axed up than to act yeah, down. And when yeah. you just putting yourself out there, right, then right. that's self gratification. Right. Like he said, you got to let God, you know, open that door, and make ways for you. Your gift will make room for you. Right. So we have we ought not to think higher of ourselves than we really are, right. because when we think that we are so high, that means we're we're low. Yeah. You I, you be in the valley. You know what happens uh, when you go to a lot of funerals. Every preacher tried it. The pulpit may have only four pulpit. seats. And look like every preacher in the community got to be up there. Now, you don't have to be up there. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I like to be, I like to look at the preacher, you know, I, because one thing my grandfather taught us, it's best to be asked up there That's than right. to be asked down, right? So we do thank God, especially if you're not on program, you need to sit out there anyway. You know, they got a New Testament, Old Testament prayer and, and, and eulogy, you know, and, and, you know, and the presider. That, that's about all you need up there. Amen. Because now, now I know you're going for the for uh, what you consider uh, I'm, I'm uh, the support of the family. But they can look at you on the side Amen. for the support. But you ain't got to put yourself on this throne 
that I got to be up there. But we, uh, go ahead, go ahead. And then while you're there, a lot of people feel like when they're not being used or whatever, that it takes something from you. If you're if you're not on on display and you're not in the spotlight, that does not diminish or demeanor you from who you are. It doesn't take the anointing off of your life, whether you're in the front or you're in the back. You still are who you are and who God is calling you to be for such of a time as this. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right, we thank you. Uh, we thank God for Minister Mike and Evangelist Gore uh, for sharing the platform with us tonight. Uh, we pray that you were blessed. Uh, give us about a, a two-minute uh, switch up. I'm about to talk with our young people, some of the young people that are here uh, dealing with self-control uh, to keep our young people engaged with what's going on. All right, uh, stay tuned just for a few moments. Change. Where do I turn to when I don't know the way? I will learn when I should have died. Lord, I need you to shine my light. You've been going through long enough, but you are here in Jesus' name. Oh, come down to the new direction. You are feel the same. Where do I go when I want to be changed? Where do I turn to when I don't know the way? I will learn when I should have died. Lord, I need you to shine my light. You've been going through long enough, but you these young ladies that are here today uh what we want to do 
we want to encourage uh, our younger generation that self-control is very important as being a, a citizen and a young lady. And being that you are the generation to come, we have to exemplify self-control to our best ability. And when you deal with self-control, that's taking control over self. And dealing with self-control, how many of you really find it hard controlling self? Y'all good with that? Y'all don't get in trouble in school? You, 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 you good in school? You tell the teacher off every now and then when they get on your nerves? See, see, that's not good. What about you? You good? You act out of character sometimes? You act out of character? What about mama say go wash some dishes? Do you mama, do you? Right? What, yeah, do, what, what do you do when, 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 when Frida say, Kira, go wash those dishes? Do you mumble? You do, don't you? But is that practicing self-control? Now, now, the truth be told, your mother, your fathers, uh, or your legal guardian who's taking care of you, they, they spend a lot of earn, uh, uh, a lot of their time trying to provide for each, each and every one of you. Y'all know that, right? They get up early in the morning, and a lot of times, the truth be told, we don't get up because we want to. We get up because we have to. Y'all believe that? They put food on your table not because uh, I know they want to, but they have to. That's the, When they go to their job, that's how they're able to provide for their children or their household. And so uh, some of the questions that I want to, to, to control, uh, to encourage you all, uh, especially we're dealing in a, 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 a season now that whether your parents taught you or not, if you ever get stopped by police, if you ever get stopped by police, it is your job that when they stop you, roll your window down, right? Put your hand on the stand wheel. Answer what you are asked, right? If they say this, that, and the third, nines out of ten, our uh, paperwork for the vehicle and everything is nines out of ten in our glove department. Y'all know that, right? Anybody ever been stopped with their parents in the police stop them? They've been breaking the law. They won't use the self-control with it. <laughs> they won't use the self-control at all. So what it is, what I learned to do, and the reason why I want to, to instruct y'all, because a lot of people be killed because they're going to get their belongings. Because one time I got stopped some years ago, and the police, I, I, I just was just trying to go to my glove department to get my stuff, and he told me, don't you go up in there, and he drawed his gun out on me, but I didn't know until that happened to me, and then my grandfather was able to teach me and say, those are the things that you don't do because they don't know if you're going to grab a gun. So self-control, keep that in the back of your mind. That's a nugget for life, right? That you say, when they ask you to do certain things, just comply, you know, whatever they say, this is what you do. So I just want to throw that nugget here at us, and I'm going to ask some questions. Uh, how did y'all like not being in school? You didn't like it. Why, why didn't you like it, uh, Laysia? Put the mic to your mouth. Because I felt like I learned more in school. Yeah. You, you felt like you lost something by not being in school, right? Yes, sir. That, that, that's good. What, what about you? Did, you? did you like it? No. Talking to Mike. No, sir. What, why, why didn't you like it? Because I felt like I, I learned more with the teachers teaching it to, towards us. Right. Yeah. Wow. Laysia, what about you, sweetie? Just be truthful. Okay. Well, <laughs> I feel like that when we're out of school, they be giving us more work than we need. Right. Okay. I mean, you could be honest. Well, um, oh, Omara. <laughs> Praise the Lord. How do you like being out of school? I don't like it. You don't like it? Mm -hmm. That's that's strange. This is strange. How how do you did you like it? No. Oh wow. No, no, wow. What what about you, my care? I don't like it because like I learn better with the teacher in front of me than I do at home. 
Get this wow. Shit. You know what? This is so amazing that all these young ladies is saying that they did not like how they did school. So what what if they say uh, we're going to go to homeschooling virtual through the internet, how we've been doing. So y'all wouldn't like that. That's good because sometimes you all are uh, uh, visual learners. You you want the teacher to show it to you because nine out of ten, mom and them don't know the techniques that the teachers knows, right? Right? And so now, now, if that being said, do you appreciate your teachers now? Right? You how many of you ever heard your teacher say, We got our education, you the one that got to get yours? Y'all heard that, right? Because you was acting out, right? Right? How many of you were class clowns in school? I'm going to raise my hand. I was a class clown. You want to make everybody laugh. You want everybody to start giggling. And guess what? They getting their education but you. Right? You you getting D's and L's. Now, I, I don't know about you all. and You know, I'm not trying to expose the parents. But, but the way I was brought up, you couldn't even bring a C home. You couldn't even bring a C. I'm telling you. And, and the way they got y'all grade scales now is, 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 is different. Because isn't it uh, 70 is a C? You know what a C for us when I was in school? A 76. No, 77. 77 was the lowest C. Y'all getting by with murder. Really? Y'all, and you could pass, uh, during that time, you could pass with a D, couldn't you? So, you could pass with a what, 60? What, what's, a, what's a D in y'all school now? 60. 60, 60 to 69? God. Man, I'd have been a smart student then. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, what I'm trying to convey to you that you, um, as the youth, now y'all can appreciate your teachers, because as growing up, some of us, the truth be told, you didn't like going to school because you got tired of uh, waking up early in the morning. You got tired of going through that lecture. But to hear y'all said it, y'all like going to school better because you learned better, right? So do you feel as though that when you go back to school uh, in the fall, if we are able to go back to school, are you going to feel that you're going to be a little behind? You're going to feel like that? And, and I don't know about nobody, but I don't like feeling behind. When it comes to schoolwork, and let me tell you something, as, as becoming a, a, a preacher, sometimes I can feel behind on certain things, and I have to go back and try to do the foundation, of, you know, uh, different things to make sure I'm caught up to speed because when people ask you a question, you need to have a word to give them, right? So question that I want to ask you all, and I want to hear your, 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 your opinion, what you think. Uh, what are some ways that you deal with self-control, ladies? ways that I deal with self-control is by writing in a book, like, the things that people make me mad. All right. And, and, and that's good. That you you, 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 you you try to find the root thing that caused you to act out of character, right? And whatever whatever gets you to act out of character, what you do, you write it down and say, this is what triggers it, right? And, and that's a good thing. I mean, that's the way, you know, God is using you and, and there's nothing wrong with that because what happens is if you find out what triggers you, then you can try to build on that and to grow out of that. That whatever people say to you won't bother you. Because a lot of times, uh, we as the uh, younger generation, um, and, and in school, and I've been in school, you know, too, as well, that you felt, you felt less than others. Uh, they might have better shoes than you, or they... Uh, you may think they look better than you. You always put yourself down. And that's what caused us to act out. And, and the problem that, that we have in Horry County, and I wish we would go to, is the fact of, like in the cities, they have uh, what they have, uniforms. And the reason why they have uniforms in the city, because you, you don't have to worry about people picking at what you don't have, because it's not always uh, that your parents... Uh, can't give it to you, they probably can't afford to give it to you. And I remember years ago, when I was a little boy, I used to love to light up shoes. And, and, and when I walked, they'd be lighting up like Christmas trees. 
until I went home to my grandparents' house, and I walked in the house, and I had on some light-up shoes, and my Uncle Randy, he was into the Jordans and the Nikes and all that stuff. And he looked at me, man, what are you doing on them bubbles, man? And I was like, what? And I started crying, and when Mama go to Walmart to get me them light-up shoes, I tell her, I don't want no shoes. Uncle Randy said they light up. Right? That's a problem that we deal with in the school system that causes people to act out uh, out of their character because of people bullying, people picking at them, people saying things. But what I like about what you said, you say you write it down so you know what you need to work on. That's a good one, ladies. What about you, uh, Ari, uh, Ariana? I talk, it, I talk to my mom about it, and I sometimes write it down, too. Really? And see, one thing about it, it's good that you're able to talk to your parents. Now, us as parents, let us not be so... Uh, let us not be so, uh, you know, driven to discipline and, and not be able to hear our child out because they can be giving you some valid information. They could be giving you something to help them. But if they are scared to come to you, then you will never know anything. So that's a part of self-control as being a parent that we have to work on. That my little girl, um, I don't ever want her to be scared to come and tell her daddy what's going on because we have so much molestation that is going on and, and, and if the children are scared to come to you, you will never know anything about it. And, and, and truth be told, that sometimes damage our younger generation and it causes them to act out, right? Because they're scared to come to mama letting them know Uncle Jojo or Uncle Billy Bob is bothering me, Right? So you ought to have an open relationship, parents, that your child can go to you. That's a good one. She says she talks to her mama. Do your mama give you good advice? She tell you what you should do, right? Do you, do you take it and run with it? That's good. That's good. What about you, Lady? How, how do you, what are some ways you deal with self-control? I talk to somebody I trust. Now, who do you trust, your best friend? My daddy and my family. Oh Lord, you got your daddy, got your daddy involved. Oh Lord, I, I have a little, I have little girls, and when they say anything about my daughters, kind of bothers you. So that that's good. So you you find someone trustworthy that you could talk to, and talking to your daddy is good, cause he he got you, he got you back hundred percent. You the only girl? Yes, sir. Oh Lord, oh Lord, I already know what that means, because I you know when you. When you got nothing but girls, you know, you're going you're gonna to go the extra mile. So that's good. Lasia says she writes it down, and that's how she did it. Now, now I'm, I'm, I'm going to come back to you. Never let it sit here and it balls up in you that when you do explode, you do things you shouldn't do. You follow me? Don't, don't let it sit. Don't let it sit there. Like you go to school and somebody always attacking you. You're writing it down, but you're doing nothing about it. And what happens is once it builds up, you explode and you do something that you had no business of doing. That's why a lot of people are in the graveyard. People are dead. People in jail because they let it build up. You know, you got to release it. Find somebody you can talk to. Find somebody that you can go to because Self-control, when you're young, you need more than just you by yourself. You don't need to be in that fight by yourself. You need someone that's going to help you, help you show you where you're messing up at. And you say, talking to your mom, that's a wonderful thing. Find somebody you can talk to. As I said to her, don't let it sit there and fester. Don't let it sit there too long because once it sit there long enough, it'll start controlling you. And when you start letting that control you, what happens is, that as soon as somebody say something to you, you start going off the handle. Have you ever did anything that you wasn't pleased with? And you 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 got in your secret car, you got in your secret closet or your in your bedroom, you just started crying like, why did I act that way? Or why did I, I do that? You anybody ever had that? Right? You're like, why did I do that? All mama told me to do is do this or do that. That's all I had to do. How many of you like getting in trouble? None of you? Right. Well, so that's good. I, I like your response. You write it down, and that's what you work on. You talk to your mom, and you write it down. 
She said she's going straight to her daddy. You know what I mean? Just, just, y'all just bad. So be careful. What, Laser, y'all better be careful because she going. What's your daddy's name? Roy. Roy. He sound like he's Roy. <laughs> <laughs> y'all better not mess with Laser. I'm telling you, she's going to Roy. <laughs> Roy don't play with Laser. So, so Kira, uh, my little niece, I, 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 we, we, we working on her. We, we trying to get her. We're trying to get her right. Uh, Kira, what are some ways you deal with self-control? Some ways that I deal with self-control, I let it sit without talking to anyone because I feel like I can handle it better. But when I can't, when I feel like I can't do nothing about it, I go to my mama. Go to your mama. Now, one of the dangerous things for you to do is letting it sit. You heard me just talked about right there. Because when it sit, you ever heard the saying, pressure bust pipes? You never heard that? That's an old school saying. Keep that. That's a little nugget for y'all. But but it say pressure bust pipes. And so what you mean by pressure, when you have a pipe and it get filled with water and if it got pressure behind it, it can blow the pipe apart. And that's what I want you all to uh, be encouraged that when life brings darts and darts at you, I don't want you to... Uh, bust pipes. I don't want you to blow off the handle because what happens is, Kira, that that when you blow off, blow off, some people judge you by how you blew off, but they don't really know what really caused you to blow off. All they just seeing your reaction, and so as being a young lady, you have to be very careful that you don't blow your handle. Just make sure that when things come, that say, hey. I'm going to learn how to control myself. I want somebody to know that I'm trying to do the right thing. And let me tell you something. When you try to do the right thing, people can see your effort of trying to do the right thing. So that's good. You can go to your mama because we know your mama going to go to defense for you too. We, we, we know that. Uh, we done experienced that. Amen? But, but I, you know, I, 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 I'm, I, Kira, some people I stay on hard. I, I, you know, uh, being around me, and when you get real close with me, I'm on your hard. Don't you think I'm on your hard? Sometimes you don't even like me. She got mad one time and put, she didn't like New Direction on Facebook. G- gave, us a, gave us a one star. Because she was mad because I got on. I think you need to go correct that too. I ain't forgot that. I saw that the other day. The bar, you know, I, but that, that was just Kira, you know. <laughs> oh, petty. That was petty. But um, Jasmine, what are some of the ways you deal with self-control? Some of the ways that I deal with self-control is I go to my parents. Go to your parents. And, and that's good. Go to your parents. You know, have that open relationship. And we want to, as we said earlier, make sure we keep that connection open and that our children can come to us. Uh, Omara, how do you deal with self-control? By listening to music. Huh? By listening to music. By listening to music? Mm-hmm. So somebody that made you mad, you just go turn your music wide open? What What you listen to? Rap. Oh. <laughs> boom, chaka, chaka, boom. <laughs> Yo, boom, chaka, chaka, like a God is good. <laughs> so, 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 you, you go to music mm-hmm. to, to help you. But still and yet, you go to music do it help you to release? No. Nope. You keep it here? Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. But when you blow a fuse, you go off the handle, huh? Yeah. And, and it's hard to control you, right? Mm-hmm. So, listen. As you being a, a young lady, uh, how many of you looking to be married one day? Mm-hmm. Looking to be married? <laughs> You're not looking to be married? No? Okay. Mm-hmm. But But listen. You want that man to find something in you that draws you to them. Acting ratchet. <laughs> no, I'm going to just be transparent. Acting ghetto. A good man ain't looking for that. A good man is looking for somebody smart, intelligent, and got something going for themselves. I'm going to be honest with you. When I met my wife, I'm going to be honest with you. When I met my wife, I met her at True Light Sounds of Praise. And when I met her, it was another lady that I was that I was driving my grandfather's truck. He had a he had a Denali on twenty fourth. So me, 
not using self-control. I'm acting like his truck was my truck because he was out of town and his truck was not my truck. But I drove it around like it was my truck. And so what I did, I, I, I drove the truck and parked it on the front row. And so during the service, I went out there. I, I, I left the church to go get something to drink, like, you know, wanted everybody to see me in this truck. And the ladies went to coming up to me, daddy, daddy, hey, don't I know you? They know they didn't know me. But I was using my granddaddy truck just to pull them, right? And so uh, I met my wife. My wife, who I'm married to now, she was there. And the lady that was coming up there talking to me, she was, she was good looking, you know, da 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 But she wasn't who I was looking for. My wife was standing over there. She was just all quiet like she is now. She don't talk much. She was just over there quiet. And I was, I was, I was looking, and uh, I was introduced to her uh, by someone. Someone introduced me to her, and, and the preacher, I remember Bishop Williams, say, look at your neighbor and say something. And I looked at her. I said, yeah, I'm going to stay to the end of the service for her. You know, and, and that's how that story begins. You know, I, but, but what I'm trying to say, uh, a man is looking for a woman that's going to cover herself up. A man is looking for a woman that's going to look decent, that's going to carry himself ladylike. Right? That's what a man going to be looking for in a wife. Y'all got plans to go to college? How many, what about the service? Anybody going to the service? <laughs> got, got the wrong man in the president right now. I don't blame you. I wouldn't go to you. <laughs> but, but listen, but, but, but have a mind to go off to college and different things. Make something out of yourself. Right? So, Omira says she listened at music. But what I want you to do while you listen to music, talk. Talk to someone. And the reason why I want you to talk to someone, because I don't want you to let that stuff build up in you and it cause you to, you know, you got, you got a mother, uh, you know, LaMonica, have that open relationship. Go to her and say, hey, listen, this is what I'm dealing with. And I'm sure she'll be open-minded to listen, right? And if you can't go, if you can't, if you can't, listen, listen to me, Omar. If you can't go to Monica, come to me. No, you ain't even going to come to me. Well, go to somebody. Because the reason why I want you to go to somebody is because it'll help you. Because when you got someone that you can talk to, because when you don't have no one you can talk to, you feel like you're in a world by yourself. And you don't really want to be isolated in a, in a cave all by yourself. You feel like no one cares about you. Let me tell you something. If nobody loves you, I love you. I want you to be something in life. I want somebody to be like, you know, she was quiet, but she was a very respectful lady. So uh, those are good things that you all young ladies said about some of the ways that you deal with uh, self-control. Uh, another question, uh, what do you get out of church, going to church? What do you get out of going to church, ladies? What do you get out of going to church? What do you get out of it? Do it help you? Do the word ever help you? Or do it ever get on your, your, your side and say, hey, preachers, the word is pricking at my heart? I got to work on that. You got to work on that? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So do church help you any? Don't help me. <laughs> okay. Um, Do it. Um. Just go ahead and pass the mic. <laughs> do church help you, uh, Ariana? Yes, sir. It does. Yes. What 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 do what's some of the things that help you? Um with self-control by being in church? What what are some things that, that come across or that is done? It helped me with people that be at school, getting on my nerves. So getting on your nerves, yeah? yeah? Okay. So uh, when you hear the word, love your neighbor as yourself, it teaches you to love that one that's picking on you, right? Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> um, Lasia, again, do church help you? Yes, sir. It do? You sound like it do. It lightens what's sit in my heart. Oh, oh, I like you already. 
She said it enlightens her and it sits on her heart. Let me tell you something. When you take that word and let it sit there and rest, let me tell you something. You never know. God might have a great work for you. And he can start at a very young age. You believe that? Yes, sir. You believe that? Good, good, good. Kira, do church help, her, help you any? What do you get out of church? Church do help me because, like, some stuff that you preach or anybody else preach, it be like, helps me as what I'm going through that week. And I just stick with it. And, like, help me throughout anything. That's good. So you feel like church does help you? Right. Church will help you if you want to be helped, right? Right. Let, let me ask you this question. Uh, start from over here. The Bible says train up a child in the way that they should go, and when they get old, they won't depart from it. Uh, would you rather stay home or go to church? Would you rather stay home or go to church? Go to church. Oh, that's good. What about you? Go to church. Go to church? Go to church. Y- y'all love church? What about you, kid? Go to church. <laughs> Now y'all, y'all acting like a domino effect. Now y'all, oh, go to church. I mean, I mean, uh, I want you to be very transparent. I mean, because we want to help you where you may be lacking. What about you, um, Jasmine? What are uh, some of the ways? Uh, what What do you get out of church? Church service. Um, life lessons. Life lessons. That's good. Good. And, and when you when you go to church, uh, let me ask this question. Do anybody ever write down stuff that the preacher is saying? Yes. You do? And you go back and reflect over and you be like, Kira, well, you just remember. Yeah, I got some of my notes in the What I preach? <laughs> what, what, you was here Sunday? No, sir. Did you watch me on Facebook? <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> Lord Jesus. What, you was, oh, what? I was on the prayer call too. Today. You was on the prayer call? Yes, sir. 5.30 in the morning? Yes, sir. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now listen, we have a prayer conference call at 5.30. She just said she won that church Sunday, but she was on the prayer conference call. It be lit, don't it? <laughs> yeah, we, Gabrielle, my little baby, say, Daddy, all y'all be doing 5.30 in the morning hollering, and they be up there just looking at us. <laughs> but but uh, Jasmine says she get life lessons out of church, and that's good. That's good. Um, Omara. Do you get anything out of coming to church? You don't? And, and, and it's good to be honest. Um, with, with you, you just now coming in, and, and what happens is, I guess you don't know anybody as of yet, but as long as you stay around, it'll grow on you. We're not, we're not, we're not going to beat you down on that. It'll grow on you because what happens is you have to get out of your, your zone. And once you get out of that zone, you know, church going to be the, uh, let me tell you something. Growing up as youth, and, and your parents probably could tell you if they were growing up in church, church trips, church outings was the best thing. When we couldn't, when, listen, we didn't have like what they got now. They got clubs for youth. And when we was little, I don't remember going to clubs. We had like church functions, church outings, and that's what we done. And, and, and what it is, we do have to make church fun so that the young people will enjoy church, right? Don't y'all believe that church has to be fun to make you enjoy it? Do y'all, do y'all like what we're doing tonight? Yes, sir. You like that? You know, we're going to work on your own mind. <laughs> what about you, ladies? Now, now, you that do praise dance, how y'all, you, y'all, y'all like that? Help you to, you know, y'all, y'all miss that, don't you? You don't miss it every Monday. But practice makes perfect. (laughs) Uh, A question. Why must we respect our elders? Ladies. Because they teach us things that we didn't know before. All right. They already been through what we've been through, so they give, they wise and give us more wisdom. Wow, wow. What you said, what I said. Huh? 
You want me to ask the question again? Why must we respect our elders? Because they can teach us. Right. And so what it is, a lot of times we may not um, like to take corrective criticism from the older generation, but all they're trying to do is help you and to help you avoid making bad situations. Now, uh, you all that are, you, you're young ladies now, and I'm sure in the next five years, how old are you, Lasia? Oh, you're 12. Oh, I thought you were about 14. How old are you? 15. 14, 13. So in the next, the next, the youngest was 11. I'm going to say the next seven years, you all will start trying to date. No, no, listen, listen, listen. Within the next seven years, you all going to be trying to date. I mean, that just, that's the natural instinct of a human being. You start liking boys. That's, that's what you're going to do. But, when your mother or your father tell you that's not the right fit for you, listen. Listen, listen. Because what happens, they see around that corner. You see, oh, he's good looking, he's fine. But they see his bloodline. They know where he come from. Do y'all not know generational curse can Roll down bloodlines, right? And 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 they can have seen where that individual is taking you. Because nine out of ten, when you fall in love, when you think you're in love, y'all whole attitude changes. See, y'all not there yet, but y'all coming. Your attitude gonna change when mama say something. All smart mouthed, thinking you're grown. Listen, I got an 18-year-old and I got a 10-year-old. Guess what? My 18-year-old, she's not even grown. She's grown. She just graduated. But I told her as long as she lived under my roof. My wife told her the other day, there's only one lady living here. <laughs> right? So we have to learn how to respect our elders. That our days may be long upon the earth. Right? Y'all heard that, right? That honor thy mother and father that our days may be long upon the earth. So we have to make sure that we honor not only our parents, but honor the ones that's older than us, that's telling us the right thing. Right? Your uncles, your cousin, the people in the church. You know, years ago, I don't know about uh, uh, a lot of people, but when we was in church, and if Sister Priest would get on me, for cutting up in church, my mama didn't get mad because she got on me. What had happened, she'll continue what Sister Priest done and get me at the house. Right? Y'all don't understand what I'm saying. Like, if, if, if Sister Priest got on me in church and she say, hey, don't you be doing that. When I get home, mama not going to get mad with Sister Priest and ready to fuss her out or cuss her out. Right? <laughs> she going to have a continuation of what Sister Priest said. So, Kira, uh, why do you think we should respect our elders? I think we should respect our elders is because they the ones that know more than we do. Right. Even longer. Right. So, uh, listen, when you, um, let we go to the next question. When you blew off, you blew the handle. Do you think you need to step into that situation when you done lost control? Or do you think you need to just stop, shut up, and get yourself together? Yes. <laughs> right? Um, let me ask this question. Anybody ever been suspended out of school, OSS? or? Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, Jesus. Yeah, OSS, ISS. And one thing about it, I, and I don't know about y'all, but I used to hate to be in the principal class, I mean the principal office, and I don't know if they still do it the way they did it years ago. When you get ready to get uh, ISS or OSS, 
they start typing, and then that thing start running through the printer. That used to scare me so bad because I know I'm going to get killed when I get home. <laughs> I just know that I'm going to get killed when I get home. Um, and so that when we're in school, I just want us to practice self-control, respecting our elders. Uh, we want the church to be a help to us. And, and if you can't go to no one, be able to go to someone that's in of authority that can help you. Uh, last question we're going to deal with, we're going to get out your way. Uh, what are some things that make you upset? What are some things that make you upset, uh, Omara? When people say I'm weak. They say you're weak? Mm-hmm. You know, the Bible say that when, you, uh, when you're weak, that's when you're strong. Tell them, say, well, you can say what you want. The Bible say, when I'm weak, I am strong. That, just tell them. Give them the word. All they want to do is test your strength. And you look like you're ready to fight too, though. You, are you a fighter? You look like a fighter. But we come against that spirit of fighting. Because what happens is that fighting mentality will get you in some places that you do not want to go. You don't, you don't ever want to. Uh, one thing that I want to do here, and, and once uh, this corona and, and with my other church, you ever seen that show, Scared Straight? You want to go? Yeah, I want you to go. <laughs> the reason why I want you to go, uh, they got they got a program at J. Ruben Loans. And what they do, they take you through those, uh, those uh, the process of showing you what jail is like. We did it when we was younger. And it's a place that you do not want to go. I hope none of y'all been in jail yet, did you? Police ever had a handcuff in there, y'all? Good. Praise our God. I never been in handcuffs, but it don't look like it feel good. So, so listen. Um, what happens is we that are in the body of Christ uh, need to encourage our young people. That uh, this young lady just said that uh, when someone called or say she's weak, that's when she retaliated. And we don't want you to ever to blow because someone's talking about you. Words, they do hurt. Words do hurt. They say sticks and stones may make, break my bone, but words never hurt. That is a lie. Because words are stick there longer than, because you'll heal after somebody beat you down or beat you up. You'll heal, but those words, it scars at the tissue of your heart, and it'll always remain there. So um, when they say say that to you, get the word of God. Find some scripture. And I give you some scriptures. They're, they're put in your spirit, put in your mind. Uh, David said, the word of God that I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. So what happens is when they say stuff like that, you, you talk to yourself with the word, okay? And you ain't got to go turn on your music. You could just take that word and run with that, okay? Uh, Jasmine, uh, what are some of the things that makes you upset? When people talk bad about you. Wow, wow. And that does hurt your feelings. And um, that people, people say some mean things to and, and it. And I'm trying to figure out where do they get some of this stuff at? Because sometimes when people pick at you, they really admire you. You look like you, you, you very smart in school. Make good grades. You look like you make good grades. You just sit there. Yeah, I can say what y'all want. I'm doing my homework. <laughs> That's how you do, though. Let, let me get my work because my mama's going to get me. Right? So, so uh, Jasmine says, um, what do you say again? When, when people talk bad about you. Let me tell you something. When they talk bad about you, let it be waters on a duck's back. Shake it off. Because guess what? You're still, eating, you're still eating, right? Your mama's still taking good care of you, right? Nines out of ten, they don't have what you have. Nines out of ten, when people are doing that, they don't have a good, stable home. They try to find things to Especially people with the naughtiest head. <laughs> you know, oh, you know, they ain't got nothing going for themselves. And they want to pick at little prissy, little cute little girls that's trying to do something. Oh, you're a nerd. Have y'all ever heard? Oh, you're a little nerd. <laughs> y'all heard that? Mm-hmm. Wear your glasses. Look like a nerd. Tell them you're trying to get your education. <laughs> L- that, right? Listen, uh, Kira, what are some of the things that makes you upset? Um, competition. Competition. So, 
that, that's one thing that we have to learn, uh, that we should not be competing trying to be better than anyone else or trying to compete who's the best. Try to compete in them school books. Say, I'm going to try to make straight A's this week, right, this year. Compete with that. Compete with education. Let's not compete with one another trying to, you know, because that's a lot of things that happens in school is uh, hanging around the, the crowd. Don't be so emotional driven, want to hang around the people that is most popular in school, right? Because what happens is when you hang around people that is trying to act all popular, and, you know, 9 out of 10, some of them don't even get an education. They get out of school. They could be have it going on in school. When they get out of school, be bombed. Right? Y'all y'all have noticed that once y'all get out of school, who y'all thought was going to be something or was going to go somewhere, be the main one sitting at the house. Right? So, Kira, uh, competition, she said competition, what makes her. So, let them know. We don't have nothing to compete about. Your mama take care of you just like my mom take care of me. My dad, your dad take care of you just like your they dad take care of you. So, competition is not something that you should have to worry about. Uh, Lasia, uh, what was the question I asked? What makes you upset? When people underestimate or talk bad about me. Oh, see, when somebody underestimate her, don't underestimate me. Because, listen, I might be small, but there's a lot of power behind me. <laughs> but listen, don't ever let nobody make you feel less than who you are. You're smart, you're brilliant, you're who God has made you, you're who God has called you to be. Don't let nobody make you feel less than who you are. Beautiful. All of you all. Y'all some beautiful young lady. Don't let nobody tell you ugly or pick at your skin color. Let them know. Well, you want to be me or something? Just, just, just tell them. You know, that'll hurt their feelings. And then don't go back and forth. Now, confrontation don't always mean fighting. You don't always, when you have a confrontation, you can have a civilized uh, 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 conversation without fighting. But let's not be the instigator Ooh, ooh. You know, how, you know how we used to do in school? Somebody around there about ready to fight. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, you going to take that? Tell them, yeah, I'm going to take it. Walk away. Tell them I'm going to take it. Because guess what? what? Who are the bigger person? The one that walked away or the one that keep going? Right. Um, Ariana, what makes you upset? When somebody try to think they're better than me, and when they talk about my mama, oh, my no. and and nine out of ten, nine out of ten, nine out of ten, Ariana, they don't even know your mama, right? They they just that used to be the key thing when we was in school. Don't you talk about my mama? They say your mama. Don't you talk about my mama? Your mama. And we be ready to fight. And all they say, your mama. You know. And so that mama joke been played years ago. And we would, we would go to bat when somebody said, your mama. All they had to say, oh, your mama ugly. Your mama this. Your mama that. Your mama this. Your mama fat. Your mama this. Your mama. And we would blow off. Now, my mama may be all that they saying. But guess what? <laughs> you ain't going to talk about my mama. <laughs> right? So, don't never let that uh, bother you because nine out of ten, they don't even know your mama. That's just something to get you going. And, and, I, and I said earlier, when you blow off, people are going to always remember how you blew off. They ain't going to remember by you, Ariana was a good student, da 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 this, da 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 that. All they going to remember, boy, when they said her mama, that girl went ballistic. So uh, that's, that's dealing with self-control, Ariana. Uh, be able to control your feelings, your emotions. Because we all love our mama. We love them to death. Just don't let that cause you to fall off the cliff. Uh, our last one, uh, Sister Lasia, what makes you upset? When people start to nitpick at me. Mm, nitpick. And what what do you mean by nitpick? Like just... Just keep talking about things that aren't true and just keep saying it. Really? And it, and it makes you upset. And, and truth be told, a lot of us, uh, we have a hard time because no one likes to be lied on. Nobody like to be talked about. That's one of the things that as a pastor, I'm still trying to learn how to do that. Uh, when people lie on you, you're still trying to 
you know, control your feelings without blowing the handle. But if it's not true, don't let it bother you. And I'm tell I'm talking to you because I I'm I'm I myself have to work on that. That when people say all matter things against you, still take it with a grain of salt and keep moving. And I know it's hard to swallow, but that was a test that God takes you through just to try to make you who you are. And sometimes uh, when people lie on you, all they're trying to do is kill your influence. You, you won't believe I have pastors that so-called supposed to be my friends. They will put out lies about me just to try to kill the influence that I have on the community so that people uh, uh, kick me to the curb. And, and, it, and it's very funny because what I can say about them will be the truth. Right? I can say all manner of stuff against them. But, you know, I let it go. But listen, don't y'all let no one cause you all to come out of character because you are... Uh, some amazing young ladies. Uh, oh, oh, uh, Omara, we're going to work with you, honey. We're we going to be right here with you. And, and what we want to do is, uh, how many of you saved? Anybody saved? Uh, you saved? You had the gift of the Holy Ghost? No? You saved? How many of you want to be saved? But listen, God can come into your life. God can save y'all. And what happens is when you're trying to handle self-control on your own, it's hard to do. But when you have God on your side, God can help you, you know, control who you are. And, and what happens is uh, that, that, that enemy that we've been talking about that's on the inside of you, it's a, you know it's another side of you that's inside of you? Y'all know that? It's, it's somebody else inside of you that calls you to do things that you shouldn't do. You know, you have a good side of you and you have a bad side of you. When mama say, get up and go wash some dishes. <laughs> she act like I'm the only one in the house. <laughs> right? Why well, she can't go do it? How many of you ever said that? And you about to get your head knocked off too, don't you? You said that the other day. But see, you have to be very careful because, listen, mom and dad is getting older, and when they get older, they want to see who's going to be responsible. And if mom and daddy saw how lazy you were coming up, nine out of ten, you're going to be lazy when you get up. Y'all agree with that? Y'all know no man want no dirty house. How many of you know how to cook? Y'all know how to cook yet? Can you burn? You, can you cook? <laughs> That's good. Hey, ain't nothing wrong with that. I learned how to cook noodles. What about you, ladies? You know how to cook? Mm -hmm. Huh? I don't know. You don't know? Sometimes. What? You, if you know how to cook, that's good. That's good. So you young ladies, I want y'all to be encouraged. Um, I want God to save y'all, fill y'all with the Holy Ghost, to help y'all. Um, it was just a pleasure just having y'all tonight dealing with self-control and what makes us upset, what makes us mad, and how church help us and how and one thing that I did love about what y'all really said is that during this pandemic that y'all still wanted to be in school and that's good that y'all still wanted an education and we pray that God will give y'all wisdom and understanding and knowledge uh, that when y'all take on y'all next school year that you won't feel behind right because I already know uh, have you ever been in class and everybody was getting it but you that thing hurts. Uh, don't it hurt? Everybody, you know, the teacher over there spending time with you. But listen, don't be afraid to say, hey, I don't understand it. You know, have an open relationship that you can tell them, I don't understand it. Because guess what? When you don't know, you don't know. Ain't no need to try to act like you don't know because what you're going to get is them grades that's below 60. That's an F. I mean, that's bad. 59 is an F. I mean, 60s. 69 was an elf in my school. 69. See, what we're doing, we're, we're lowering the standard. We need to up it. We need to make, we need to make C's uh, from, uh, well, it used to be, what, 80, 80, 80, no, mine was an 
five. Oh, it started with B's. Oh, okay. Well, it changed a little bit because you're a little younger than me. Uh, 85 to a 92. 92 was a B, and 93 on up to 100 was an A. <laughs> so, so listen, y'all go to school uh, this upcoming year. Go with the mindset that I'm going to do better. I'm going to learn how to control myself. Do you think what we talked about kind of helped you a little bit? And take that what I have given unto you. Be able to talk to your parents. Uh, and I'm sure your parents will be open-minded and talk with you. Um, never be afraid. And when things are taking place in your life and you know it's not right, talk to somebody. Let them know. Even if it goes down to somebody doing something they ain't got no business with you, talk up. Right? Talk up. You, you, you know, somebody say something or touch you inappropriately. Talk up. Don't be afraid. Don't be scared to talk. You go tell, and I know if you tell Joe or Roy, <laughs> things are going to change. Things are going to shift. So let us pray. Kind Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you tonight, God, for these young ladies. We thank you for each of them, oh God. We pray, Father God, that you anoint these young ladies, oh God. Save them the more of God. Oh God, we ask you to fill them more with your power and your spirit of understanding. In the name of Jesus, God, as they move from this place, oh God, oh God, encourage them, oh God, in their daily living, oh God, as they walk and do the things of you, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, let them be able to tame this this flesh that they have, oh God, that caused them to act out of character, oh God. In the name of Jesus, bless them indeed, oh God. And God, we will give you praise and give you glory now. This we ask in Jesus' name, amen. So we love y'all. We thank God for y'all. Uh, we know it was a long session tonight, but we appreciate you all. Y'all keep doing what you're doing and, and, and draw yourself closer to God that God can save you tomorrow. All right? God bless you all. Where do I go when I wanna be changed? Where do I turn to when I don't know the way? I will learn when I should have run by. Lord, I need you to shine my light. You've been going through a long night, but you are here in Jesus' name. Oh, come down to the new direction. You won't feel the same. Where do I turn to when I don't know the name?